Hello and welcome to this round 12 here of uh, Grand Prix Brussels. We have, well, once we hit the red zone, quite a lot of red decks, it must be said. Red Black Chain Wheeler very, doing very, very well in the standings right now. Oliver Suters, he's on Chain Wheeler, up against Arna Huschenbeth on Esper Control, one of the few control lists that is right towards the top of these standings. And I would imagine that, as the control player, pretty happy that he's getting the first play of the game here in that search for us canter. Arn played uh, Loic Le Brion last round, who was uh, also on the uh, Red Black Chain Waller, and um, came up victorious. Yeah, clearly had a plan. Let's an essence scatter go to the bin where the, there with that search for last canter. Uh, currently facing down a Goblin Chain Waller. Going to take his hit here more likely than not. And the Esper Control is in the early, day, early game. It's going to be looking to hit its land drops to try and get things going. Keeping the mana up for the disallow on Chandra has looked pretty good here. Uh, once the Planeswalkers get in play, they're a little bit, a bit fiddlier to deal with than creatures. So what does that mean when you, uh, you mill Teferi of the Search for Iskanta? It's either you're looking for land or you already have a Teferi. Fatal push dealing with Bomat Courier now. Is there a second Fatal push for the Chain Whirler? Doesn't look like it. Not Just taking that point of damage there. That wouldn't work. Oh, of course not. Sorry, yes. <laughs> Get a little preemptive there. Well, that w he would be able to cast it. I, d I don't think that would work. Wouldn't do a whole lot. So, uh, Goblin Chainweller continues to swing on in. We're going to have a fairly inauspicious game one if uh, Hushin Beth can't find something to deal with it comparatively soon. But he's hitting his land drop, so one must hope that he's got something big to go with it. Uh, I mean, he uh, he uh, he milled the Rascus Contempt last turn with four mana up, so that probably meant he had something up his sleeves. As Cantor the Sunken Ruin now transformed, so additional mana in that regard. Also, he's going to have the ability to search for spells, and oh, a, a nice reprieve there for uh, Anahushin Beth as Oliver Suters plays his seventh land and passes. Suters pretty flooded yeah. here. The red deck doesn't need that much mana to work with. Oliver is most likely flooded with uh, with uh, uh, unlicensed disintegrations and abrades, because with seven mana, it's unlikely he has any uh, any action. It's either any of these two cards or more lands. It's not a cycling land. It's not a creature because he would have played them. Uh, and yeah, that's that's pretty. We can't see the hand. But I'm fairly positive that's what he has. So Torrential Gearhulk flashing back Essence Scatter there to deal with Glorybringer. And you're right, there wasn't a braid uh, lurking away in Oliver Suter's hand. So since he, Oliver does not have any artifacts in play, uh, he does not want to wait. If the other card is uh, Disintegration, there's no reason to wait to uh, hit the Gearhulk with uh, Disintegration. Yeah, ma just make it a red murder and see what you can do with it. Goblin Chainwell again cast here. In response, an activation of Ascan to the Sunken Ruin, finding Teferi there. It looks like the, the, the Goblin might be hitting the battlefield. That's a, a point of damage right there. Whether or not it'll achieve any more, we'll find out soon enough. But a glimmer of genius here from Hushinbeth, who just wanna, wants to keep the hits on coming. Scries too, at least one of them staying on top by the looks of things. Arn is mostly going through the motions here. He's not in any... Uh under any kind of pressure. He has six or seven cards in hand. Most likely removal, Teferi. Even though Oliver is on 20, the, this, is, this, is not, this is not looking good for Oliver. There was this Kanta as well, Activist Kanta with Teferi. He was looking bad already. This is not looking any better. Yeah, I mean... It's six mana for uh, Gearhawk. Let's Teferi go down to two here. So in principle, that would mean that Suters could have a, a shock or similar to finish off the Planeswalker. In practice, though, nothing to suggest that that was imminent. Uh, a cycle here from Hushin Beth after seeing Scrap Heap Scrounger coming down. Vraska's Contempt responded to with an abraid here by Suters. I like this play from Suters, basically recognizing that Vraska's Contempt gains life for Hushin Beth. It gets rid of the Scrap Heap Scrounger permanently, whereas at least this way around, there's the potential to get it back from the graveyard. Another search for us cancer being played here by Anahushin Beth. The is uh, pretty much the only 
use at this point. I mean, if another Torrential Gear Hulk is played, that pretty much means that Oliver is not... He's not going through with... Uh, he's not dealing any more damage, so... And yep, that's that's torrential gear Hulk. Exactly what happened. Comes down, able to block the goblin chain whirler exile. Thanks to Vraska's contempt, the scrap heap scrounger, and Suters does not need to wait for all of that life to get knocked down. He wants to go on to game two. Five minutes and change, and we're going to be getting to our game two here between red black chain whirler and Esper control. And for Hushin Beth, that's pretty much exactly how you would have been looking for that uh, game one to go. If you can do something similar in subsequent games, I don't think he'll mind too much. So did you notice the trend here? The more we get into the tournament, the earlier the people can, the players concede. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously that's not something that you want to extend ad infinitum. Clearly, it doesn't make sense to go, well, you're a better player than me and you seem to have a good deck, so yeah, you get the win here. But at the same time, a tactical concession, especially in game one, um, mm -hmm. to give yourself the most time, yeah, it just seems to make sense. I mean, that was, to me, yesterday that was the, the story of the day. The story of yesterday was, when do you need to concede? When, when are you dead? Back in the days when the, the rounds were 60, even 70 minutes. I remember Pro Tours played in 70 minutes, 7-0. <laughs> you had no reason to concede. You had all the, time in, all the time in the world. But now rounds are 50 minutes. Well, now. It's, for, it's been 50 for minutes while, for yeah. quite a while now. But 50 minutes is not too much. If yeah. you want to play three games against a control deck... If it start going, you know, a little, s a little more slowly, you need all the time you can yeah. have to finish the game. And well, I mean, in that spot, you had Hushin Beth with a pretty full grip, plus Teferi in play, plus Ascanter in play, plus a Torrential Gear Hulk in play. Meanwhile, Suters had 20 life, but just lands at no, that the point. The game, the game was pretty much over. It was, it was going to finish in about two or three more turns. Yeah, because the, the Gear Hulk would have attacked, but even without the Gear Hulk, with uh, Ocean Beth with six cards in his hand, an active Escanta, a Teferi, it was just a matter of time until he found a uh, win condition. So, and there was really not nothing Oliver could actually draw to uh, turn the tide there. Now, it's worth saying, of course, that that's the kind of the thinking for Game One and potentially Game Two, when we're talking about. Game three, i.e. the point where conceding means that you're conceding the match, you might as well see if you can find your million to one or however many to one shot of, of closing things out. Unless, you know, if, if you do feel like you're, you have no chance of winning and you're playing a long tournament, you've still got yeah. gas in the tank for future rounds, maybe that rest even is just a little bit more valuable. I mean, one a million is a... Uh, I, I don't think it's even there. When you're, when you're dead, you just... <laughs> Yeah, it's something can happen to your opponent. I mean, he can have a stroke or something. That's not something you wish for your opponent. But that's that's possible. I don't know if it's one in a million, but it's, it's still possible. But you don't want you don't want that to happen. If yeah. and, and if that's the way you have to win that game of magic, you can just you know go and have a rest. So these players they'll go to their sideboards here, and in terms of the adjustments that they're making, especially for Anna Hushin Beth. This will be one of the matchups that when he came into the tournament, he was specifically thinking about. Red Black Chain Whirler, a pretty well known quantity within this field. Um, and so, no need to spend too terribly long on, on making adjustments because chances are he will have done literally the exact sideboarding that he's done this round, many, many rounds already this tournament. So, this game it will be Suters on the play. And if you're Oliver Suters, would you rather be getting lots of early damage in here or having the kind of the more tenacious threats, the things that require more specific removal? I think coming out early is uh, is one of the ways to go. The more you wait, the more you're running into uh, counter spells mm -hmm. and easy ways to deal with them. For example, dis disallow. I think Arn is probably uh, keeping them, or at least syncopates. Yeah. And these answers, well, they answer all the threats, and the more uh, the the more costly they are, the the well, the more easily they are to counter. So they might be more powerful, but in the end, they're more easily uh, dealt with. Yeah, and I think that at this stage in the metagame as well, the Esper control list, it 
must recognize that having ways of exiling creatures that much more important because of the 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 fact that many creatures the first removal spell will not be good enough this mulligan though you can see Oliver Suters, in spite of being a game down, he looks in, in pretty high spirits here. If he's going to have to play against Esper Control and win two on the bounce, then at least having this game work out a little bit easier for him with his opponent starting one fewer card couldn't hurt. I mean, is it really how, uh, how you react when you open the mulligans? Uh, you personally. In are you internally, I sure. Thi I think they were just joking here, you know? <laughs> like, if you open mulligans, you're like, ha, 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 ha. I don't know. That's, that's, not, that's not a good spirit. Well, uh, th too much. I don't know. In inside, if you're in a tough matchup and your opponent mulligans to five, like, you'll take it, right? Well, it doesn't mean that, well, sure, I'll take it. But I'm not going to show it that much, you know. Uh, you're, you're pretty poker-faced every time you play there, Raf. No, thank you. I don't know if that's a good thing, but... <laughs> I actually like to joke with my opponents. All right, 10-2 Scrappy Scrounger coming down for all of us suitors here. Especially when I'm winning. I like to joke <laughs> with them when I'm winning. <laughs> uh, Search Rise Cantor coming for Anna Hushenbeth. Two very different turn twos. One of them is going to deal a lot of damage. One of them is going to set the other player up. Cast down getting thrown away here. What does that signal? Ooh. That's a nice one. Exile the Scranger and uh, gain some life. Yeah. It's a very good answer to a Scrappy Scranger in this, uh, this matchup. And one has to think that that was one of the cards that was specifically being thought about by R&D at the point that they decided that card. Uh, Hazaret the Fervent coming down as the follow-up here. That getting hit by an Essence Scatter. Yeah, Infernal Reckoning, as much as it has a demon fighting an Eldrazi, works equally well against all of these artifact creatures. Exiling mm, uh, Umkal Engine is pretty nice as well. Yeah, I'll take it. Of course you would. Of course you would. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of copies of Field of Rune in play for Arno Hushenbeth. It may be that those, the best that they can do is hope to deal with some of the black mana on the other side of things. Dressing Syncopate, Essence Scatter, uh, sorry, um, Essence Extraction, pardon me, and uh, Torrential Gearhulk there. What is, what is Oliver holding here? Because, all right, so it must be, must be another Glorbringer then. Why do you say uh, that? Because he doesn't like he doesn't have cheap cheap threats. And last turn he played last turn he played the Hazaret and uh and nothing, right? And Tapland. Is that what happened last turn? Yes. And this turn he played the rest and Glorybringer. He didn't have a turn three play. It's gonna be all those big threats. More glory bringers. Like yeah, even something like a rekindling Phoenix would have been a good play last turn, so mm -hmm. Well, Hazaret. He played Hazaret, but he couldn't attack, so. So, Gloria coming in. Uh, in this matchup, just a 4 4 flying Haster most of the time. Fatal push not good enough. Does mean that this uh, Azkan to the Sunken Ruin now in play. Yeah, Oliver's draw is not, not phenomenal here. Yeah, he's going to have to hope that this Glorybringer can overperform by getting more than just the one hit in. Yeah. Uh, or just a pass? Yeah, Torrential yeah. Gearhulk allowing a cast down. That cast down initially in the graveyard just thanks to Search for Ascanta getting to do its work on the back end. And Anna getting aggressive here with that Torrential Gearhulk, dealing the first five points of damage. Soulscar Mage, a very unexciting uh, card at this stage in the game, though it combines interestingly with cuts here against the Torrential Gearhulk, putting minus one, minus one counters on it. Oh, wow. This is a... Uh, he could have uh, played... I don't know if he could have played around it, or he could hope that uh, Arn did not think of it. But that's... Uh, yeah, that's a g that's game here. Cause the so what would happen was the... What would have happened... Soulscar Mage, when it's in play, all the damaged from your sorceries pretty much have infect. Yes. So uh, you put minus one, minus one counters on creatures. So playing a cut on the 5-6. Yeah, pretty good. Turns it, it turns it into a 1-2. However, 
still still not very exciting. Like two cards to turn a five six into uh what? The one one two? two? But I mean better than nothing. However, unfortunately, Essence Extraction in response on the uh Soul Scar Mage, meaning it got killed off. That means that the cut simply wasn't gonna do anything yeah, at all. And he had seen it as well. Yeah. So of of the duress. When he played duress, he already had the uh, Essence Extraction. So pretty easy game four on here. Yeah, it picks up the win there. He gets to continue his romp through day two here, and we're going to get to continue our coverage of matches from our feature match area soon enough. Do not go anywhere. It'll be Tim and Raf for more magic after these messages. And welcome back to continued coverage of Grand Prix Brussels. I'm Tim Willoughby. This is Raphael Levy. 
Hall of Famer and all round great guy, winner of World Magic Cup for France. Uh, and we have plenty more magic for you from this round. We're going to get to head back down to our feature match area to see a Pro Tour finalist from just last weekend uh, battling back once again with Red Black Chainweller. Martin User, you see the six next to his name, currently the sixth ranked player in the world. He's up against Lucas Florent on Mono Blue Storm. Jalfrin Void on turn one for Florent, getting him a scry in spite of the fact that he did not take a mulligan. Follows up with a renegade map, so he'll be able to get some more lands into play soon enough. As it is, Karizev coming down for a uh, user. He's going to be able to get some early hits in with that. Early doors, no blue mana available for this mono blue storm list. How much of a problem is that for the storm deck? Not so much when you have a renegade map. I suppose like so. You don't, you don't need uh, the blue mana early. The only card you want to cast in the early early turns is uh Inspiring Statue? No, the blue card. The crane. Oh, I see, yes. Clean nest crane in the early turns. So it's not too bad if you don't have it until maybe turn four or five. Well user here has a very aggressive draw. Uncrop Crasher on turn three, meaning that he's hitting for a full six points of damage. And Lucas Florent down to thirteen here. Yeah, we no. Does he have a Stitcher in hand? We'll I like this choice. Enough. I like this choice of the island. One of the original bits of artwork for Island, back from the early days of the game, back when you started playing rough. Uh, this is a little after this one. The art, yes, but not not yes. this particular one. So his Psy Master Thopter is immediately followed by a Mox Amber. Mox Amber. Already pretty good in Mono Blue Storm anyway, but even better with the addition of Psy as it means it's that much easier for the artifacts to tap for colored mana rather than just uh, improvising out spells. And Psy, of course, also generating a Thopter when that Mox Amber got cast. So this is one of the ways that the, the Mono Blue Storm list can fight against even these aggressive draws from Red Black. Why, well, Lucas' hand is pretty good. I think he's holding his Tetrarine hand. So if Martin does not have a way to interact with Lucas' board, he might, he might just be able to, uh, to do his things. Yeah. And he has an outcome as well. So next turn he can just block. There's Hazaret the Fervent. Three cards still in hand for Martin User, so it's not completely guaranteed that the God will be able to attack next turn. If it can, though, potentially pretty big problems for Lucas here. Oh, one and 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 uh, the other island. Is that an Ice Age island there? It is, yeah. So, going old school on the lands. Wow. Some pretty new ones in terms of spells. A big Baral's expertise here. Picking up a Mox. I like that. No, that's not a Saturate. That's a Reservoir. It's even better here. So, he's going to gain like three life with the next spell. Yep. Three life from the Mox. Get a token. Thop to token. Yeah, I mean, this is a nice way of putting it all together. Even gets a cheeky hit in here. Buff. Why not? That's what size. Does. That's what the side does. Buff. <laughs> Slap in the face with the tools. Yeah, it's sending a message rather than finishing the game off. But, you know, every point counts. And he has the city's blessing. <laughs> Shows a cheeky Feldegriff there uh, lurking in the tokens pile. Don't know quite how that one made it in. No, it's the city's blessing. I, th I think he uses it as the city's blessing. That's cute. It's the quest. Your quest is to, uh, to yeah. be blessed by the city. Richard Garfield's blessing. Yeah. Actually, it would be the other guy. Yeah, the original Feldegriff yeah. was, was an anagram of Richard Garfield, PhD. The doctor that came up with the entire game. So a cycle here from Martin User. And I, th I think he's got another carries ever if he wants it. I think Martin recognizes he's in uh, he's in trouble here. If he doesn't find a way to uh, deal with either the reservoir or Psy, uh, that's a uh, that's a problem. Because Kirizev is going to be too slow now. Hazaret is going to be blocked by Thopters. And Luke is on 13, so every every spell he casts will uh, give him life. All right, so here does come Karizev, and we've got um, plenty of lands in place so that next turn Martin User can potentially get some big attacks in. But right now, yeah, a bit of a roadblock coming from what Lucas has going on. 
Prophetic Prism. That's spell number one. One life, one card, one thopter. And if you can find an inspiring statue, you can potentially get quite a bit going here. One Mox Amber replacing the other. Spell number two. Two life, one catter, one mana. And he does have an outcome as well. Oof. I think I think Martin will probably recognize he lost here. He might he might just concede very soon. Yeah, this spell number three, drawing three cards and yet again allowing for Mox Amber to get cast in this game. Did he uh, kind of life here? Oh yeah. Now it's a shame. Twenty or twenty-three? No, he missed. He missed the three life from the from the outcome. That's pretty important. The life is what ultimately is needed to be able to activate that big ether flux reservoir at some point. And in the meantime, he's got to keep his life total fairly high against the aggression on the other side of the table. I don't think, I don't think the three life uh, actually important in that game. It could be important in other games, but in this game when he has so many cards in hand and the reservoir and Psy and five tokens, I don't think it will matter eventually, but this is what I talked about like yesterday and every time we see a, a, a blue storm player they will miss triggers yeah it's just a matter of whether or not the triggers that you miss end up impacting the game yeah. overall sometimes they're very critical you're gonna miss it you're gonna miss a couple uh couple of life points somewhere and you're gonna lose because of that sometimes it's gonna be relevant but you will miss them yeah. it's it's hard to say and heartbreaking to see very good magic player i know luca luca is a very good magic player he's a very thorough when he plays and he has his uh, I've, I've seen him play in the in the rounds mm -hmm. he has he's very methodical when he counts points when he takes the tokens when he draws cards when he throws cards but even then he ends up missing some some triggers and so this is this is a very tricky deck to play and this is one of those decks that you really do want to get some games in not on Magic Online, just to make sure that yeah. you're, you're familiar exactly. with the processes with it. Yeah, and some sleep before. You need the sleep. You need a good rest before you play this deck. Otherwise, it's not going to work well for you. Okay, so we see some big attacks here from Martin User. He only exerts one of his Arncrop crashes just to make sure that Psy is not going to be a blocker here, and that means that we're seeing a couple of double blocks on the other side of things from Lucas Throng, throwing a lot of Thopters in the way of these two Arncrop crashes. Just a few points going through there. And it's only going to take a matter of a small number of spells for uh, Florent to win back all of the, of the damage that he took from that set of attacks. And there is Inspiring Statuary in hand here. Almost always the first spell that you see played on these big turns for the Mono Blue Storm list because it enables so much virtual mana production as it turns all of the artifacts that you're putting into play with the likes of Psy into things that can tap for mana, at least for colored spells. Spell number two, gain two life, get a Thopter, and draw a card. Is this a paradoxical outcome here? Looks a little like it. Plays a Reliquy Tower here. Yeah, keeping the, the Prism and the Tower for a Yeah, well. <laughs> so, a little misstep here. I'm interested in, in why you play the Reliquary Tower there, because it feels to me like one of the things that can happen when you're going off with Mono Blue Storm is that you run out of blue mana. And he's going to be drawing a bunch of cards with this paradoxical outcome. Yeah, that was a little, um, little misstep here, but at this point, it's there's so many things going on <laughs> that I don't blame him for uh, just, you know. Like playing the land before you draw it, there, it's like, you know, when you have your computer yep. and you start multiple tasks at the same time and it starts to slow down. Yep. That's exactly what happens when you have six cards in your hand and you have to sequence different spells with Storm, because it's not exa it's not intuitive. There's a lot of different things you can do, and uh, it's it's not easy. So your computer, your brain computer, starts to go slow, and you know there's a time limit. And you have to make your play, and sometimes you you have the the judge behind you say, oh, you have to make a decision. So you're like, uh, okay, I'll just play my land and play my things. So and, and meanwhile, you still have to keep 
your triggers in mind. So. Uh, uh, interesting. So we have commits to deal with Hazaret, Sai, and a whole bunch of Thopters blocking Karizev. Meaning that all of Martin Yuza's best efforts at the end of that turn, Lucas Laurent still on 25 life. Hard to see how Yuza is going to be able to get this one going. At least for this game. A second copy of Etherflux Reservoir. So now both of these are going to be triggering in terms of gaining life. Twice as many triggers. So now it's gain four life, get a token, draw a card. Yeah, the second Etherflux Reservoir, obviously you don't need it in terms of dealing damage, but it does mean that gaining all that life are m a lot easier. Yeah. This deck is so much easier to play on Magic Online. Just set auto yields for a whole bunch of the triggers. Oh, but they also, you can't forget them. They are there all the time. Yeah, you auto yield all the, all the life from the reservoir. Auto yield the, the, draw, the draw abilities from uh, the prisms. Yep. A lot to be said for getting the, the number of reps in that you can playing it online, but equally for playing it offline a little bit too so that you can make sure that you're not going to forget about the things that the computer will do for you. So carries Ev on turn two here for Martin User. That's going to be part of what he needs if he's going to get lots of damage in early. Arncrop Crasher on turn three seems ideal. Seems a shame that Bomat Courier only coming along now, but a bigger shame that he's missing land drops here. Lucas hitting all of his land drops and has the turn three inspiring statuary alongside two renegade maps that he's not had to crack for lands here. Could see a fairly big turn from him this very next turn, potentially. And a Baral's expertise and start throwing down free spells. If he felt under pressure, he could go for it now, but he really doesn't need to, I wouldn't imagine. Yeah, just gets the Etherflux Reservoir down. And even though right now Martin User can crack through for a fair amount of damage, if he'd had another land, the Uncrop Crasher could have been involved as well. The bigger concern is just that with just two lands to work with, Martin User struggling to put too much of a clock on. And now Lucas gets to untap with Etherflux Reservoir in play. Yeah. He's got Inspiring Statue. He's got lands. Yeah, but he only has three cards. He, mo he came out of a, of a mulligan. But Psy plus his hand, yeah, his hand has a uh, has the res that he needed, so like for prism, a lot of life for another for card here. Yeah. That's what that's what the other cards were uh, needed to be for it to be for the reservoir to actually be well good. A Martin user here, looking at all of these cards he's got in hand, many of them requiring black mana which he simply doesn't have. Pretty much all of them requiring more mana than he currently has available on the battlefield. Yeah, but it's not, it's not lost yet because uh, Chernwiller is actually really good in that situation. Because it takes care of all the, all the Thopters. Well, there is the mountain. I don't know if he wants to play it first. If he wants to play it before attacks. Or if he wants to try to, uh, to have the Psy block... Uh, Scranger, for example. Goes for it before sure. attacks here. Get the hits in where you can. So block blocking a, a monkey. Ragavan not successful in his bid to reduce Lucas Flon to zero here. Might right. need to draw uh, Dragon Skull Summit to be able to... Uh, efficiently come back in this game. Yeah, an unlicensed disintegration on Sai here would be pretty decent. At least Lucas does not have very many cards to work with. A paradoxical outcome would be what he needs to really just close this game out. As in, as in zero cards to play with? I, the card that he top decked. Yeah, well, one. Oh. Khan, a kind of a nice one off the top here. Yeah, this one is, uh, is pretty good. It's going to block pretty much everything. Because Khan is a colorless spell rather than an artifact, you can improvise it out with the Inspiring Statuary, which means that Khan ticks up and there is the opportunity to still have mana available to cast something else this turn. 
or indeed ticks down, makes a construct. And that construct's pretty big here. It's 5-5. Uh, five, five. Yeah, and it's easy to imagine it getting a lot bigger thanks to Sai in subsequent turns. Still more red mana for Martin User. The black card in his hand mocking him just a little bit. And the Construct token in play there, one of Lucas' own constructs, is from Unstable, hence the silver border. I drew my Construct for the, for the PT and 4 every time I ate Karn. I think I made a microwave, a fridge. It's a Construct. <laughs> so every time I used Karn, I had this... Uh, Khan's uh, kitchen? Yeah, pretty I much. I like it. Like a fridge with a smile, a microwave, you know, with the, uh, the buttons on the side being the ears and stuff. That's pretty funny. I like it. A little bit of whimsy even for the Pro Tour. All right, so you were playing that deck at the... Um, oh, you had, you had Khan in your deck at the Pro Tour, right? Yeah, and I, play, I played Storm at Nationals. It didn't do too well. It wasn't, wasn't awake enough for the, to, play, to play the deck correctly. Yeah, it, it seems like a deck that has a lot of decision points in it and the sequencing really important no i hadn't played i hadn't played any game with like pa paper cards yes so it was exactly uh, what we we're talking about yeah, exactly on, right? that's that's why i can't talk about it because it happened to me so so along comes uncock crasher that can be helpful in pushing through damage here because the construct would otherwise be a formidable blocker on this board but Martin User in a tough spot. He's got a, a Planeswalker to deal with. He needs to worry about the fact that Lucas Florent will be getting life with each spell that he casts here. Yeah, he's four cards in hand are they, uh, pretty much irrelevant here because he can't cast any of them this turn. No Construct blocks for now. And user here attacking with creatures sufficient that even if Sai decided that he wanted to jump in the way of one of them, Khan will be succumbing to this attack. At which point the best that uh, Sai can do is jump in the front of the Uncut Crasher itself. Lucas Floron takes three, loses his Khan, and has to rely on the top of his deck and that one lone card left in hand to get something going here. When I think of the Bowman not getting in, I mean... Martin's hand is pretty bad, so trading four cards for four cards for uh, for what he has might have been pretty good. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I don't know how much longer Martin can afford to wait around on. I mean, he's not in bad. He's not in too much of a bad shape yet. Yeah, right now the construct is is really the only threatening creature on this battlefield. Sai a good blocker, but not much more. Maybe you want to keep this uh, Chain Whirler. Maybe he valued the Chain Whirler in his hand a lot. So it's probably what's going to happen. He might play the Chain Whirler uh, before attacks, then attack with a Chain Whirler and uh, trade his three black cards in hand for a uh, the next four cards from the Bomet Courier. A reasonable trade. Unless Lucas Luca decides not to block the Bomet Courier. Yeah, then things get kind of interesting. Yeah, what would Martin do? He's uh, he's on ten life. He's not on that much. Maybe you know he doesn't have the mana to uh, to uh, activate Bomat Career and get a, an abray to uh, finish off Psy before blockers, so that is not an option. Yeah, not too many one mana spells in total in these red black chain weather lists. More of the, the sort of the purview of mono red to have the one mana interaction. So kind of a free block on that Bomat Courier, forcing the issue a little bit. And then this Construct, currently a 5-5, so it, c it can jump in the way of just about anything here. 
It has taken a point of damage from Goblin Chainweller. A braid would be devastating here. If he plays, if Martin plays a braid here on the statuary or a, a reservoir, then Lucas loses everything. So that's why the the block is dangerous. But if he has, if Martin has a braid, it's it's trouble anyway. So might as well do the the best block mm -hmm. if your opponent doesn't have it. So here we do see the play of Bomat Courier getting sacrificed. These four new cards, what do they look like? There's a Chandra oh, in, in there. Braid as well. Land. There's another Bomat Courier as well, so he does have something to do with his mana post-combat. So post-combat, he's going to play land and a Braid uh, Reservoir here. I think. Oh, no, he, has he played land? He oh, he played, played the land Lannister, so never mind. So he can't do that. But Florent on four here. He's going to have to lean pretty heavily on that Aetherflux Reservoir to continue to stay in this. A land not helping at all here. Oh, he has a, an Aether Meltdown in hand. Oh, that's aggressive. Oh, he has another one. Yep. Just for one life. Yeah, this is the mm -hmm. kind of game where missing a trigger on life gain would potentially oh, be yeah. a very big Definitely. deal. Definitely. Do you play your uh, Aether Meltdown here? Probably to gain some life, to gain two life. Is that good enough? I mean, I guess he has to hope that it will be. I mean, there's nothing else to do here. Pretty good comeback from uh, Martin here. He was stuck on land, and Lucas could not. Could not. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Uh, you know, he had a good draw couldn't finish yeah he was this is there's a word a good start but not a good I ending don't have for Lucas Florent here capitalize there we go capitalize Love on that. his uh, on his draw here we go as things stand Martin user we know that he's already used the abraid he now has the potential to get big attacks in yeah, that, that should be enough yep if everything went horribly wrong, he even had a Chandra in hand to be able to get some more damage in in future turns. As things stand, though, it did work out for Martin User. We'll be going to game three here between Lucas and Martin. And thanks to the wonders of Time Walk Magic, we get to immediately see things work themselves out here. And his I think it's going to be an Ornithopter in this game. Pomat Courier getting in for the early point. Oh. Prescient. How did I know that? You're just that good at this game. That, that's how you get to be Hall of Fame, is by being able to figure these things out in advance quite like that. Truly a master of your craft, Raphael Levy. Man, if I if had this power during the games, I think that would be called cheating. I think, I think, it, prob <laughs> I think it probably <laughs> would. <laughs> but Matt Courier does not mind attacking into an Ornithopter, get a few cards uh, face down for delivery later, potentially. Uh, Dragon Skull Scummit and no further play from Martin User just passing things back the number six player in the world yeah look at the, look at his hand it's like he has a duress and a braid a lot of disruption for uh, for Lucas plan and a glory bringer as well for uh, a side later oh no play little little suspicious that the, the no play on turn three from uh, Lucas Florent his deck typically jam packed full of lower cost cards I guess maybe if you knew that next turn you're casting Aetherflux Reservoir and you want to just unload after that, you could potentially see that, I suppose. Meanwhile, this Bomat Courier gradually ticking up. At some point, it'll get to potentially draw quite a lot of cards here. And user does have the land to work with in this game three. He will not be missing his third land drop. Once he gets three, almost all the cards in the red black chain while the deck unlocked. I remember a time when Bomat Courier was not was considered a bad card. It, I mean, it, for a while it wasn't obvious how good it was going to be. Partly because there was this thought of, well, if you don't have it on turn one, what's it even really doing? And against Walking Ballista, it was not great. Yeah. And Walking Ballista was everywhere. Now Ballista is gone, and look at this little uh, mailman here. Yeah, turns out it's the little cockroach that survived the apocalypse. And Duress here seeing pretty decent hand from Lucas. He's got Khan, he's got two paradoxical outcome and an inspiring statuary. Khan the take from user there. 
I must admit that I, I like the look of these paradoxical outcomes if Lucas LeBron can find a few more oh, no. business cheap spells. I don't actually like them here. He doesn't have anything to but to bounce. And if he plays at end of turn this time and he meets a braid, then he loses everything. So that I don't I don't think that's what you want to have at this stage of the of the game. You want you want to draw it off the prisms. You sure. don't want to yes. have them in your hand. You you might want to have one for later just in case. Safety net. Two seems like a lot, I guess. I not at this that. stage. At this, at this stage, the second one is just, just not great. Now, if you're a user here, you want a little bit more pressure, but I can definitely see a temptation to just sit back on these abrades to some extent. Yeah, you can't. You can't actually play it here. You can't play it because you're just gonna play it, and the only thought is gonna die. So, not not a good spot here for Lucas. You can't play the paradox outcome. Yes. No. So after a little bit of thought, well, no, Martin no, does no, go no, for Uncle No, you can, I guess. It would be a very bad inspiration. A very bad cycling. No, you can't because Martin stepped out. Ooh. What did he pick up there? Another on the top tier. All right. So if we do, if we do another. Yeah, three on orthopters and we start going somewhere. All right, so that's much better already. Yeah, the inspiring statuary there doesn't actually stop the potential to cast a paradoxical outcome here for Lucas Thron because all of his artifacts do now have improvise. So what could happen here, Martin could pre-combat a braid one ornithopter, making, uh, giving Lucas the choice to play his, uh, his uh, paradoxical outcome before blocks, before taking four. And then in response, if Lucas plays the outcome, he can abraid the statuary. Yeah, kind of an in interesting spot. Oh no, he only has one abraid. I thought he had two. That's a glory bringer. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's interesting then. I mean, a glory bringer not too shabby here either. Mm -hmm. For now, though, it's just the attacks from user. Is it even worth it exerting here? Probably not. But that courier is going to do so much work in the, in the next couple of turns because unless Florent has a borrowed expertise, it's going to keep. It's going to keep uh, receiving a mail. All right. So, shaping up for paradoxical outcome here. Oh, here's another outcome. Here's a third one hand. You really don't want to have, like, <laughs> that many. So, a braid on inspiring statuary in response. So, inspiration here. I like the array of islands that Lucas Florent has going on there. That the White Cliffs of Dover Island alongside the Rookery <laughs> Tower there. The Euroland. My island of choice as Goblin Chainwheeler comes down after combat for Martin User. Life totals 2016 here. User able to get a little bit of damage through while uh, this Mono Blue Stormless stumbles around a little bit. But in the meantime, also, Bomac Courier with just a huge amount of cards yeah. underneath it at this point. That's what I'd be uh, worried about for uh, Floor. Glintness Crane drawing into uh, Prophetic Prison there. I think he wants to draw more zero uh, casting cost spells to have uh, his reservoir net him as much life as possible. Makes sense to me. Second Glintness Crane. The Crane's pretty good blockers against the likes of Beaumont Courier. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. We'll let. It'll play. Yeah, I think he's taking the marks here. Yeah, the mocks gets a lot more interesting when you've got Inspiring Statuary because it means that it's very, very easy to have it be Ooh. useful. Navigator's Compass there. That's good. That's good. Another way of gaining life. Another cheap artifact. Potentially fixing your mana up just a little Does bit. Does he have eight cards in hand? Might be worth double checking. Oh, only seven. Man. Perfect. If all, if all, no, eight would have been even more perfect. There's a tower. Ah, a tower. Get some extra value. 
That's the best. That's the best when your opponent asks. How many <laughs> cards? Eight. And you casually answer eight. Don't you have to discard? No, I have my tower. That's why I play my Reliquary Tower. That's, that's where I live now. Yeah. In my house of cards. And that's that's the same that's the same smirk you have when you tap your uh I don't know, your uh Maze of Fifth. Or because there's a Borgin play. Is it a Borgin play, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm using this one. Look, look, I'm using this I one. I have a Riftstone portal in the graveyard. Yeah. It's oh, fine. Yeah, yeah. Why? What are you doing? And there's always a judge around there like, did you use this one? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Why? What's wrong, judge? Chandra Taunts the Defiance coming down, shooting one of those birds out the sky. It's, it's hunting season for these uh, Flintness Cranes. Oh, shame. Poor yeah. ducks. Yeah, right? <laughs> Crane for dinner. Oh. It's amazing this Beaumont Courier can still move with the weight of cards that it's carrying around here. Oh, a little pouch. Glorybringer getting discarded, but so many more cards being drawn by user here. Both players now with a full grip, but Martin User also with a fair amount of cards in hand yeah, here. The letters were not actually that good. Is it, is it three lands? A chain whirler, uh. I've seen better chain whirler payoffs. I mean, the activation seemed great. How many better Bowmats pay, pay, payoffs? Yes, sorry. So is Lucas in four? Or is he, is, are the... Oh, was he on 16? Ooh, that's what he wanted. He wanted the land to cast everything in his hand. S step one, we're going to kill off Chandra. That much easy. Now we get Ether Flux Reservoir and a Flurry of One spells. life. Two life, because that was the second spell. Oh, two life. Th three three life. life. Boom. Four life. Seven, Seven life. life. Ugh. What do you need to do to fog in this deck? Yeah. It's only one green and one. Come on. All of that hard work that Martin User did to deal damage to Lucas Florent seems like it's for nothing here. Yeah, he's back on tracks, and remember, he has the, the other outcome even has the city's blessing. The outcome is going to be great next turn if uh, the reservoir sticks in play. However, I see, I see a braid in Martin's hand. Yeah, I think he's not going to wait around. Is there a braid here? Yeah. There it is. Got to deal with that Aetherflux reservoir. Just makes it so much more difficult to get the damage through that you need. I like Florence's chances better now than, than a couple of turns ago. Oh when, yeah. his, when his hand was Ornithopter and double outcome. Took a while to set up uh, this board state, but now it's so much better. Yeah, the cards still return for Paradoxical Outcome here. That's All three blockers. Yeah, three blockers too, so we can blank the next attack. There's a card as well. Ooh. Martin's hand is two lands. So the next block is going to be. So you'll notice that the game going a little bit faster than you would normally see here. That's because we have it at the end of time in the round. We want to make sure we'll be able to give you the conclusion of this match. Martin Yuzer, not a slow player, but right now, twice as fast as he normally would be. Flicking the cards twice as fast. <laughs> it's true. So four creatures attacking here, but Lucas Florent has three blockers and has access to Paradoxical Outcome, which he will deploy here to bounce all three of his blockers, plus some uh, relatively safe to return artifacts. So drawing five additional cards here, and he'll be playing a large proportion of them again this very next turn. If he's found his second Aetherflux Reservoir here, then this could... He did? If he has, then this is going to be oh, great. Yeah. Oh, he found a Psy. Well, that's still pretty good. Sai, those ornithopters bringing along friends. How many chin whirlers has uh, Martin played? Two. He has played two thus far. And he's going to need to find another one if he wants to get past the suddenly gigantic board of Lucas Flon. This one compass is doing a lot of work for uh, Lucas. Yeah, it's, it's gained him six life, ignoring the life that he would have gained from uh, having Aetherflux Reservoir in play. Also, it's drawn him additional cards, thanks to Paradoxical Outcome. Best covers compass ever. Yeah, he has, I think he has one in the sideboard. 
That's, that's all you need. You don't want to have too many of them, but... The first one, definitely high impact. Duress here with an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> Burrell's expertise. <laughs> Khan, quad prophetic prism in hand. These prisms begetting more and more cards. Jaffa and Void meaning that a land getting scryed to the bottom here. Here comes Khan. Make a huge construct. Now starting attacking. So much happier with this mono blue storm list now that it can reliably be attacking. People have been trying to make paradoxical outcome work for quite a while in standard and now is the point where I feel like it's a real contender in this format. Yeah, no, I don't think Martin can uh, come back from this. Yeah, the construct in play is essentially the abyss each turn, killing off a blocker. Are they 18-18? It's 5, 9, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, bouncing the, the compass as well. Get some sweet, sweet compass value. Big swings here coming from Lucas Florent, meaning that now Martin user almost down and out when it comes to blockers. And, and there's the handshake. Wow. Mono Blue Storm taking it against Red Black Chain Whirler. In principle, Chain Whirler does have a lot of the tools needed to be able to make things work against the Storm deck. Goblin Chain Whirler is obviously spectacular against all of those Thopter tokens if you get them at the right moment. But there we just saw the power of drawing the paradoxical outcomes, gradually grinding through so many extra mm -hmm. cards, able to get something going and ultimately resulting in the win for the Frenchman there. Congratulations to him. We are fast working our way through our rounds. It's not long before we'll have our top eight here at Grand Prix Brussels. Do not go anywhere. It's going to be Simon and Riley after these messages.